Hi, welcome to the Age Changer Show brought to you by Summit Life Ministries. My name is Carmen Farrell. This is Lynn Farrell, my husband, the founder of Summit Life Ministries. Our mission is to elevate the church's vision to see our identity through God's eternal purpose, to equip believers to live with an eternal perspective, and to empower believers to live supernatural lifestyles and faith-filled obedience. Part of that supernatural lifestyle, we started talking about um, last episode, and it's about strengthening ourselves in the Lord. You were talking about David. Mm-hmm. It's good. Well, as we shared in the last episode, um, my family is walking through just, uh, my immediate family is walking through kind of a, just a, a moment of pain. And when I say it's a moment of pain, I mean that because we know that our afflictions are momentary. They are temporary. Uh, and they work in us our response to them, if we will not waste the moment, if we will not waste our sorrows, right. sorrowing as uh, individuals that do not have hope, That's Paul right. said. But if we will take our sorrows and plant them as uh, seeds of hope and faith, uh, we know that this painful moment can be retranslated by God because we know that he's working and he's working it out for good. And there's an eternal work that happens, an eternal weight of glory. That is amazing. Yeah, that this can change our lives forever, for eternity, if I and if we respond to God and not allowing our emotions uh, to demand and inform the moment Mm -hmm. uh, with negative feelings that turn into... Uh, a bitterness or a resentment or a, an anger and a frustration or with a hopelessness. Right. Uh, you know, that, that the enemy wants to use moments of trauma and pain to become a permanent arrangement that frames how we carry um, the emotional chemistry of our heart. And I, I like when God creates the chemistry of my heart. Yeah. And that I'm experiencing the revelation of who he is and that that mixture of his joy strength and his faithfulness and his goodness and his love for us um, allows me to live in a way that causes me to rise above the circumstances mm-hmm. that want to suppress and depress us and to, you know, fossilize us in a moment of pain and distress us like and said dist- about David, yeah. he was distressed he was distressed create a, an unnatural pressure and stress upon us that gets us to living a reactionary life mm-hmm. instead of a life that in faith and humility can respond to god mm-hmm. and so where we left off in the last episode was we read a verse out of First Samuel chapter 30. And I want to reread it to you again just to remind you of it. But I won't go into the background again. If you want to know the background of how David ended up in Ziklag and, <laughs> and you know, the circumstances that surrounded this moment. But we, we do want to say that he had lost his sons and daughters. Mm-hmm. He, the, the men that were with him, their families had been carried off by this marauding band of of uh, terrorists that just came and they would they would strike suddenly and they would kill people still possessions but then they would enslave people mm-hmm. uh, specifically women and children and so David arrives back to this place that they had been living only to find out all of his family's gone all of his friends their families are gone and so this was a moment of mourning and dancing, they, or mourning and sadness. Mm-hmm. They did not know if their families were dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did not know what had happened to them. Uh, there was this question mark of the unknown. And so there was this outpouring of anguish and grief. And, and many times out of pain comes this manifestation of anger. And so in this moment, his friends even turned against him. Mm-hmm. 
and they just wanted to take it out on him because maybe there was this thought that if we wouldn't be following you, David, we would have been here to protect our families. But this is what it said. And David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of, of stoning him because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and his daughters. And some of the greatest uh, words that we find in the Bible are small conjunctions. And one of the conjunctions that uh, really becomes this, this, this pivot, this spiritual pivot mm -hmm. uh, that, that brings encouragement. The circumstances are, are this, and here's the conjunction, but, but God, mm -hmm. or but someone engages their heart uh, in responding to God in a certain way, and it changes and redeems the moment. Yeah. It sanctifies the moment. It retranslates the moment, reinterprets the moment, and it provides opportunity for God to begin to work in a greater way, to begin to reverse uh, the curse, to begin to reverse the situation. It says, but, here's the conjunction, but David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. I believe that little phrase, David strengthened himself in the Lord, is laden with powerful truth. And it's truth there that is truth, though, in, in plain sight. It's truth in simplicity. So what David didn't do is he didn't begin to turn to himself or to anyone else to look for strength. That's right. And, and so last night uh, when we got this information, which was this painful news that we received, you know, I found that at first I started to looking at myself in saying, what was it that was in me that was not adequate to the situation or what could I have been doing in a greater way uh, for my family? And uh, could I have done something that I wasn't doing that could have made a difference? And the Lord had to stop me. And so we said in the last episode, we learned to lean into him. We learned to lean into his sovereignty, knowing that he knows the beginning to the end. Okay. Uh, nothing is out of his, his grip and that he is, he, he is now ruling and reigning effectively in the midst yeah. of these circumstances. It's not like he's up there going, I hope I can get this circumstance back into a manageable situation for me. Yeah. It never was out of his grip. Uh, it was never out of a, a, a situation uh, where the situation was becoming unmanageable for him. No, it was in the grip of his grace, mm -hmm. not beyond the bounds of his power. And so if he has allowed this moment, there is purpose in it all, and that if I trust him, ultimately his purpose will be seen, his glory will be revealed. And so he invites me in this moment to strengthen myself in his character and the reliability of his character and his nature. And, and once again, he will prove to me, because he's willing to show yes, himself yes. to me in this moment, it's not like he says, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to be bothered by you as you look to me in this moment that's beyond you, but it's not beyond me. And because it's not beyond me, don't be, don't be bothering me about it. No, he, he invites me to him in this moment. And he says, where will you look to find your help, Lynn? Where will you look to find your strength? Where will you look to, to uh, find your comfort and, 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 and look through this moment and go beyond the temporary and the transient 
And will you begin to see th that scarlet thread of my eternal purpose at work through it all? And so David did not turn to anyone or anything else than the one who had proven himself to be the consistent, faithful one throughout his entire life. And David had this spiritual knack. And I think that it was something that God taught him early on because you can see it in these crisis moments, these moments of, the, of what I call a crisis of faith where David was able through the power of remembrance to reflect, reconstruct God's faithfulness in past moments, mm -hmm. uh, in past moments of crisis in his life. And, and he was able to reconstruct the framework of how he saw God present in those painful moments and how the goodness of God came out of them. So when he was facing going into battle against Goliath, you know, as people were saying, you're not qualified, you're not capable, you're not able, this is not possible, uh, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure, you can't do this. David, in just this powerful moment of testimony, excuse me, testimony, was able to just bring to his remembrance in spiritual recall the faithfulness of God through traumatic moments. And, and when we read these Bible stories, you know, we read them as if we're disconnected from what he's telling you about. When it said that I faced a bear and I faced a lion, these were life-threatening experiences that required courage in the face of intimidating moments. And so as a teenage boy, he, he's not bragging in these moments. He's not saying, yeah, you know, I hunted down a bear and I killed it. Or, you know, I found a lion sleeping and I was able to, to slay it. No, this was, these were predators that were preying on his sheep. And as a shepherd, he was responsible for their protection. And so here is this face off with this bear who's come in to devour the flock. And, and he has a choice. I can run in fear or I can face this intimidating moment. And this means that I have to engage in mortal combat with a bear. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking how that, because the shepherd lays down his life. It doesn't always mean like in that moment, he laid down his life. He basically counted his life as lost and put himself into the fight to That's save right. the sheep. So he didn't lose his life but he laid it down. Yeah, one of the things that I've done, Carmen, from time to time is, you know, I love history and you know I, uh, I love listening to document, uh, documentaries about real life moments of history. And there was a series, and I forget the network that put it on, but it was about men who had received the highest honor, the, the Congressional Medal of Honor mm -hmm. for Valor. And there were stories of men who did not survive uh, their situation, but showed uh, conduct and character and courage and valor that just went above and beyond. Right. Uh, they literally laid down their lives for their friends. But there are other men that survived their ordeal mm -hmm. and they lived to tell the, the story. Mm -hmm. and, and some of them did not tell their story others that were saved by them or others that observed their behavior uh, told the story. And uh, one of the things that is often said about men that we consider heroes and that have received these medals that went above and beyond the call of duty is they said that the difference between them and others is that they were fearful too, mm -hmm. but they were able to overcome their fear, manage their fear, and they were able to take action even though they felt fearful. Mm -hmm. And they knew that they may not live through the moment, but they realized because of those that were around them, they knew that they had to do something 
uh, to try to save people that were around them. And uh, most of them did not act for themselves. They acted on the behalf of others and they were willing to lay down their life or uh, be willing to risk their life for the sake of saving others. And so David had to face his fear and he was able to manage the fear, overcome the fear, and then act in a way that was courageous. Now, when you live to tell the tale, it, it may sound like, wow, what a courageous person, but, but the courage did not manifest itself until first there was this confrontation with their fear. Mm -hmm. um, the bear was not the first thing confronted with David. The lion was not the first mm -hmm. thing confronted with David. The giant was not the first thing that David confronted. It was the fear of the possibility of, of facing the bear and the lion and the giant was. And so David was able in his life of faith before God to act courageously in faith, trusting in God in moments that were too big for him, but he was able to confront the fear of the moment. And he turned to God and trusted God in the most difficult of situations. And so there was this supernatural history of God's deliverance, of God, God enabling him, empowering him to do things what people should not do at the age stage that he was at as a young man or as a teenage boy. I mean, as a 15, 16 year old, who goes out and kills a guy that's probably twice your height mm -hmm. and is a trained warrior and, and, and you are still growing in your ability and agility. And, but God uses what you offer to him and he supersizes your life as you by faith, trust in him, leaning into sovereignty, leaning into his grace mm -hmm. and into his strength. That so points to David's life with God, that David had spent time with the Lord, so he knew him, he knew his character, he had grown in fellowship with him, which you can hear when you read his Psalms and when you pray his Psalms, it's just his heart of love and devotion and interaction mm -hmm. with God. You know, as I have grown to... Uh, function somewhat literally when it comes to computers <laughs> and, and by no means am I like a expert when it comes to technology and I thank God you are more literate than I am and so I rely upon you but I, I know enough to be dangerous uh, but I know this thing I'm literal enough to know this about computers that sometimes our uh, computers, the software picks up bugs, viruses, mm -hmm. things that slow down the process. And sometimes uh, things become so bogged down that you have to go back and reset the computer mm -hmm. to what we call the default setting, an original setting that resets everything so things can be rebooted back up or reinstalled. Um, and and you can see that this was a spiritual default setting for David. That's good. David learned to not run from God or run to other things in the moments of pain, but he, he learned to respond to God and not react to the devil or to the circumstances around him. So the first principle that we see in this passage to summarize what we've been discussing is that he strengthened himself not in himself mm -hmm. or in any other thing but in the Lord and I believe a part of that process was him going back and remembering the faithfulness of God yeah. and to begin to recall reconstruct how God had been so faithful in his life in God's leadership of his life, how God had brought him through so many, many things. And so when you begin to recall and reconstruct and remember the faithfulness, the goodness, and the greatness of God, all the things that he's done for you, then it can inform your present circumstance. 
So I want to ask us today, why would we think that God over and over and over and over again would show us time and time again his goodness and his faithfulness and the consistency of his interventions to help us all along the way, only to bring us to a moment where he says, I'm not going to be here for you. This is where my goodness ends. This is where my mercy <laughs> stops. This is where my grace is going to be not sufficient for you in this moment. I'm sorry, there are limits to my power. There are limits to myself. No, no, no. I tell you what, there is this <sighs> thing in human nature where we instinctually sometimes, emotionally, can begin to say, God, is this the end? Is this when you're going to let me down and disappoint me? And we've got to come against that, that sinful aspect of our nature where we want to doubt God's mm -hmm. character, where we want to instinctually go to a dark place and, and self-pity can come in and we can, we can go to dark places and saying, this is the moment where he will forsake and abandon me. And we've got to, re you have to have an answer for the reason, for the hope mm -hmm. that lies within you. And biblical hope is, is not just, I wish, and, and you know, in a wishy-washy way, I, I, I hope this works out. No, it anticipates the intervening grace of God. We anticipate that God can do anything at any time, and, and so we look for him. We're looking for him in the moments of pain. We're looking for him in the middle of the flames. We are, we are looking for him through deep, dark waters. We're looking for him in the val uh, valley to show up in ways that we would not expect. And so we learn to strengthen ourselves in our God. And we know that God's power, his presence, his sufficiency of all of his nature and character will be brought to bear as we lean into it. So when we, when we say we lean into sovereignty, we're not just saying, well, I hope this works out and I can't do anything about it. No, it's, it's, it's an intentional spiritual act to say, God, you're sovereign in this moment. We believe that you're going to bring your power to bear. You're going to show up with your presence. You're going to retranslate and reinterpret these circumstances, decipher them in our hearts, where we're going to rest again in the sufficiency of, your, uh, 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 of who you are, and we're going to be able to rest and know, God, that, that it is well, and therefore it is well with us our soul. And so I can say to my, my mind, my thoughts, I can say to my emotions, my feelings, put your hope in God and, and do not be downcast, but rest and rely and strengthen yourself in the Lord. Well, we love you guys because we got to stop. Otherwise, I'll continue just to exhort myself to strengthen myself in the Lord, but I hope that you strengthen yourself in the Lord. Turn to the Lord, recall and recount the goodness of God. Number his benefits, count his blessings. Remember what the Lord has done for you and, and fix your eyes upon Jesus who is at the finish line of our faith. Finish well, bless you. Thank you for joining us for the Age Changer Show. If you have any questions, you can go to summitlifeministries.com. Also, if you have any um, comments or questions about this episode, you can put those in the comment section and we will respond to those and respond to you. Uh, thank you for joining us um, in your prayer and in your faith as we walk this life together. Um, if you would, could you like this video and share it? Then the people in your circle of friends and the people that you connect with can also be encouraged by the word. God bless you and keep your eyes fixed on the Lord.